these two things cause so many problems. It's not a game, it's a rat. This is a distributor. Old cars have them, new cars have coil packs and uh, you know, newer updated ignition systems. So I've been learning a lot about how all this stuff works. There's a little thing inside the distributor called an ignition control module. And that was failing and causing intermittent starting issues. I had weird like acceleration problems. I just assumed and this is crazy to assume this, but current situation I'm in, this is kind of how I had to assume this. From my poor alignment that I still haven't gotten fixed. Like, I'm towed in, I have positive camber, I still need to sort this out and I have not, just haven't had the time to like, spend a whole weekend straight taking off the spindle and like shaving that piece and then, you know, doing the inner outer tie rods like I really, and just get it aligned, I just don't have the time. Just been so busy, but I thought my violent shaking on acceleration was due to this bad alignment. But the other day I drove my car and hit 55 miles an hour. Whoa, we're fast now, boys! I think I hit about 50 miles an hour and the car was still like, the steering wheel wasn't shaking. It was just like, it was driving straight. So I was like, that's weird. So that's only an acceleration shake. I started doing some research and I found that the ICM going bad can cause acceleration shakes, piss poor gas mileage, which I've had, um, um, like just a whole bunch of other issues. But the main issue, I go to start my car, the car would have power to it, like it's a brand new battery. Car would turn over and run, but then die instantly. And it would do that, do that, do that randomly. Sometimes it's, it, it's been getting way worse. The other day I took this to work, it took like six times for the car to start and I'm like, what the hell's going on? And it, it was just weird. So it led me to think it is the ignition. So first things first, took my ground off before I did this. I removed the distributor cap. I already replaced it. I didn't have time to film. It was kind of like those things we kept going with it. But I ended up taking my distributor off. You can see where I marked it here because you want to make sure you don't advance or retard your timing. You need to take these two bolts off that are down here. I think they're eight mils or something like that. They're really tiny. Those two bolts are what holds the ICM in. And then there's like four like pieces, uh, four wires that go into it. I'm just going to take my distributor cap off so I could show you guys what it looks like inside there. So this is what your distributor looks like when the cap's off. This piece down here is your ICM, held on by these two bolts. I put new gaskets in here because I had, so, you can see, look how much bad, there's so much oil there, it's like terrible. But I got most of it cleaned up, you know, whatever, I didn't want to spend too much time doing that. This one, can't really see with the GoPro, but it had some weird, like, just, I don't know, for the price and I, since I had it open, figured just go replace that so I got a nice new one only thing about getting this off is that you got to make sure you have access to the bolt that holds it in which is sometimes you just got to like crank it just to get it to the right spot because you can't really reach it over here or if it's up here obviously to get the distributor off you have to take these off too and the whole thing comes off make sure you mark it check your seals check for oil leaks once these two bolts are removed this whole piece slides out. You already have your um, rotor off. And you just pop these off and just make sure they go into the right spot because it's important. And you have to take the heat sink off, which is, I think, two more little bolts. And you have to put this one on your new ignition control module. And that's pretty much it. I mean, this cured everything. My car starts perfectly now. And it was a really annoying issue that I couldn't figure out. I still need to replace my alternator and my alternator belt because that's just something I need to do. But for the meantime, probably just gonna replace the belt and just keep an eye on everything and just pay attention to how it's starting and the consistency. 
but you want to make sure your gaskets are good because anytime this gets moisture in it it causes problems and uh yeah easy job only cost about 70 bucks to fix and she's running like brand new it has twice the power i'm gonna go on a ride in a little bit and i'll show you guys so boom that's all you really need to do to fix this problem this stupid little piece you can see these are where the heat sink bolt into it's pretty crazy so yeah this is just the stupid little things that go wrong and you could fix them yourself just need to like take your time figure it mm -hmm. out and you'll save yourself a lot of money some people will probably have given up with this car or like come up with ghetto tricks to just get around it but just, just fix it that's it's that simple you know that's it and in other news, <laughs> more of my exhaust has crumbled off, literally disintegrated off. Look at this, it's unbelievable. Dealing with 30 year old Hondas, 31 year old Hondas. But uh, yeah, running really good, really happy. Maybe we'll go for a ride later. It's literally like 900 degrees out. Oh, and that was another thing. It started having the the, the non-starting like well issue and like idle really low issue when it was hotter out. I had this thing idling for like four hours during the snowstorm and like had no problems. My assumption is the ICM was just getting overheated and just failing or who knows what was going on but so far I think I've gotten this under control and I've stopped another oil leak in the process so we weren't gonna do it, but I'm like, you know what? Take the time, just go do it. Like, why not? What's stopping you? Took me an extra 30 minutes out of my life to go down to AutoZone, pick up the distributor gasket, replace it. Yeah, also took the time to like clean up stuff. Like, you remember what this motor looked like when I first got it? stopped a lot of problems did the valve cover gasket look there's no more oil coming from here cleaned here cleaned in there you'd see this now couldn't even see that it said d16a6 when i first got this thing ridiculous stay tuned we're gonna go for a ride jeez louise it's hot in here like this. figure out how to charge and deplete all the oil and the air conditioning that is the next because believe it or not this car does have AC oh like every component for it is here other than the new fluid and it's already been converted so we hope that that helps out I 
think it's too hot to even be in this car. Look how juicy this interior is. These vents here. How 90s is this? Juicy is the operative word. It's so 90s this car. So 80s. It's such a weird. See, it's it's just that good time. Just get innovative now for this thing. Like it still has a little bit of alignment shake, but before it used to shake so bad. On Excel? On acceleration. It would be like violently shaking. But uh, as you can see, 40 miles an hour and it's sitting pretty good. you're just gonna die and that's it whoa this guy's on my ass bro you know the tradition after we fix a car we go get ice cream yeah we're gonna go do that see you next wednesday